Okay, this video is going to be about um, acid-base properties of salts. Okay, so basically when you dissolve a salt into water, that um, pieces of that salt can um, split the water to make it either an acidic or a basic solution. Okay, so let me talk about the three scenarios that you possibly have with these salts. You have a neutral salt, and this happens when you have... Um, a strong base and a strong acid in solution, um, that means that it's going to be neutral. And we'll look and I'll show you an example of that. Um, basic salts is when, like if you look at the example here, that would be like if you have um, this salt, potassium acetate, and you dissolve it in water, what happens? Well, um, you'll form acidic acid and then you'll be left with OH, which is your strong acid because, or I'm sorry, your strong base because potassium and hydroxide makes a strong base. So if you're making, if it's a weak versus a strong, you're going to make um, the strong base. So since potassium's in group one, that makes the hydroxide make the solution basic. Where if you have a strong acid that could be formed, the acid will win. So NH3 is the weak base. So if I dissolve NH4Cl in solution, um, HCl, hydrochloric acid, is a strong acid. So therefore, the solution that you make will be acidic. Um, go ahead and read through this if the, that kind of didn't make sense. But we'll look at an example here. We'll look at a few examples. Um, but one way you can do this is this step-by-step -step, um, thing. But I think the best thing down here is um, is basically explaining how you solve for this. Okay, so it says, let's look at an example of iron nitrate or iron 3 nitrate. So which acid reacted? Well, NO3, that means you have HNO3. So that's nitric acid. So that is a strong acid where the base that reacts is going to be iron 3 hydroxide. Okay. So, so what we mean by that is you have, you can have HNO3. Well, it's not in equilibrium because it's strong, but it'll be HNO3 dissolving and making H plus plus NO3 negative. Okay. So that's where you get the nitrate from because you'll have protons in water. And then the other one would be if you had FeOH, not there, three. Um, that means it would dissolve into the Fe plus three plus the OH, okay? But since the H, or since the NO3 is the conjugate base of a strong acid, that means that the solution is going to be acidic. Okay, so you can see down here, they kind of write out, okay, your cation attaches itself to the hydroxide where your water is going to act, um, well, it's going to make it acidic because it's going to accept the proton. Okay, so let's look at a couple of examples here and maybe this, maybe doing this stepwise will make a little bit more sense. Okay. So you have to ask yourselves, which acid is reacted? So you have C2H3O2, which is acetate ion. So you're going to have acidic acid is your acid, where sodium, you're going to have sodium hydroxide, and that's going to be a strong base. So since we have a strong base, this solution is going to be basic. Okay, so let's kind of write out what that's going to look like. So ultimately, you're going to have your your acetate ion, so you'll have C2H3O2 plus water, and then this is actually going to accept the proton from water, so then you end up with OH and H2, I'm sorry, not H2, C2H3O2 and then you'll have your H out front, which is your acidic um, proton, okay? Um, let's look at another one. So you have NH4 and NO3. So you're thinking about what the conjugate of that substance is. So NH4 is the conjugate of NH3. So that's ammonium. 
which is a weak base, and then NO3 is the conjugate base of a strong acid, so that's nitric. Okay, so this, since nitric acid is a strong acid, the solution we're going to make is, a, is an acidic solution. Okay, so that means you're going to have your NH4, NO3 in solution, but NO3 is going to dissociate because it's a part of a strong acid, and we're going to say plus water. So what happens is the NH4 goes to water, so we get H3O plus plus our weak acid, or I'm sorry, our weak base, which is ammonia. Okay, so this will make an acidic solution where that one was basic. All right, last one. So aluminum sulfate. Okay, so you have to remember. Um, aluminum hydroxide, that's going to be a weak base because aluminum is not part of that group 1, group 2, but SO4 is part of, um, I'm sorry, part of sulfuric acid. Sulf sulfuric acid is a strong acid, so therefore when we do this problem, it's going to be your ion in water, and then you're making that HO3. H3O, your hydronium, plus your aluminum hydroxide. Okay, so you have basic, as acidic, acidic in solution. Okay, now how do we use this when we calculate pH? Okay, this is where our relationship between Ka and Kb is going to come into play. But first we have to ask ourselves, is this going to be an acidic or a um, basic solution when we do these problems? Okay. So this says calculate the pH of a 0.3 molar NaF solution, okay, and then it gives us the Ka value of HF. So again, we have to ask ourselves, is this going to be acidic or basic? Okay, now if I look at this, I'm going to have um, hydrofluoric acid, which is a weak acid, and then I'm going to have sodium hydroxide. So this is going to be a basic solution. Okay, so now let's talk about this. So that means that I'm going to have my F minus in water, because that's off of the sodium, because the sodium is going to be always soluble, because it's a strong electrolyte. And it's, so it's going to be in equilibrium with HF and hydroxide. Now I hope you're saying to yourself, well, wait a minute. If I have hydroxide as one of my pieces, I can't calculate the concentration of hydroxide because I only have Ka, okay? So with that being said, we have to figure out what the Kb is for F-, minus, which is the conjugate base of HF. So if we're doing Bronsted-Lowry, that means that the acid, or I'm sorry, that water acts like the, um, the base. Am I saying that right? Yep acts like the base, so this is the conjugate acid, okay, which means this guy's acting like the base, nope, I got it backwards, this is the acid, I don't know what's wrong with me guys, I'm sorry, so this is the acid, and this will be the conjugate base, okay, where this will be my base, and this is the conjugate acid, okay, so I'm looking at the relationship between my weak acid and my conjugate base. So with that being said, I'm allowed to take this and solve for Kb. And if you remember how you solve for Kb, you're going to do 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4th. So the Kb for the conjugate base, which is what I want, so I'm going to do 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 7.2 to the negative 4th, I'm going to get 1.39 times 10 to negative 11. So that is going to be the Kb for the conjugate base of HF. So now I can set up my Kb equation. So Kb, you have to remember that water is a liquid here. So Kb is going to be HF times the hydroxide over the F minus, okay? So since I started with 
a 0.3 molar solution, that's going to be the starting concentration of F minus. So ultimately, these are your two X's. So we're going to have X squared over 0.3, and we're going to set that equal to our 1.39 times 10 to the negative 11th. So then I end up getting... So then if I do all this math, so I do 0.3 times this and then take the square root of it, I get x is equal to 2.04 times 10 to the negative 6. Now we have to remember that this is the OH concentration. So I'm going to have to solve for POH and then subtract that to get the pH. So POH is equal to the negative log, negative log, of the OH concentration. So then I get, so the negative log of 2.04, negative 6, I get a POH of 5.69. So then I do 14 minus 5.69. So this solution ends up having a pH that's equal to 8.31. And so that proves our point that it's basic. Okay. Um, let's do one that deals with a uh, weak acid. Okay, so just like we did before, we have to see what we're making. So NH4's conjugate, um, conjugate acid is going to be NH3, where Cl is a conjugate base of HCl. So the strong acid wins in this case. So our reaction is actually going to be NH4 plus plus H2O in equilibrium with NH3 plus H3O plus, okay? And then it tells me that the Kb value, so the conjugate acid of NH3 is the NH4 plus, so we're going to have to solve for Ka again, just like we did before. So you're going to do 1 times 10 to the negative 14th, divided by 1.8 to the negative 5th. So I get the Ka for NH4 plus equaling 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10, okay? So then you're going to set up this equation just like you did before. So you're doing um, Ka is equal to the H3O plus times the NH3 divided by the NH4 plus. So then you just plug and chug. So it's going to be x squared is equal to the 0 0.1 molar, which is equal to the 5.56 times 10 to the negative 10. So I get x to equal 7.46 times 10 to the negative 6. And again, this is the H plus concentration, so then I can just do the negative log of that. So I'm going to say negative log 7.46 to the negative 6, so I get my pH end up being, ends up being 5.13. Okay, um, hope this makes sense. We'll be talking and doing more examples in class. Thank you.